Introducing God's Plan, Chapter 13, Peter and the Apostles. We've heard how the eleven disciples were left on earth to be apostles, to spread the news of the Lord Jesus to all the people of Israel. The Lord Jesus had asked his Father to forgive the people of Israel when he was dying on the cross, and so they had been given another opportunity to believe in the Lord Jesus. One of the first things the eleven apostles did was to choose another apostle to take the place of Judas Iscariot, the one who had betrayed the Lord Jesus to the authorities. When the Jews had important decisions to make, God had told them to cast lots. In this way, God guided their decision-making, and so the apostles chose two men, Joseph Barsabbas and Matthias, and they cast lots to decide which would be the twelfth apostle, and the lot felt on Matthias, and so he joined the other, other eleven. To help the apostles to do the work, they were given God's Holy Spirit. This happened on one of the Jews' special feast days called Pentecost. The twelve apostles and all the other believers in Jerusalem were sitting in a house together when a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. And then they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire resting on each of their heads. After this, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages. A great crowd of people gathered outside the house when they heard the noise and they were amazed when they heard the people talking to them in their own languages. Then people stood up and spoke to the crowd. He explained that God had filled them with his Holy Spirit. He also explained that Jesus, the one whom they had crucified, was truly their Lord and the Christ, their Messiah. After this, 3,000 people in the crowd became believers in the Lord Jesus. Now that they were full of the Holy Spirit, the apostles could do many wonderful things. They began to perform miracles of healing, just like the Lord Jesus had done. These miracles were signs to the Jews that God was working with the apostles, giving the Jews yet another chance to repent and accept Jesus as their God, their Saviour and their King. Soon after being filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter and John went to the temple to pray one afternoon. A man who was crippled from birth lay by the gate to the temple begging for money from the people going in and out. When he saw Peter and John, he asked them for some money too. But Peter told him that he had none to give. Instead, he took the man by the hand and lifted him up and said to him, In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. The man jumped up and started walking and leaping and praising God. Many people gathered around, amazed at this miracle. Again, Peter spoke to the crowd. He told them that Jesus was the one the prophets had spoken about, the Christ. He told them that if they repented and they accepted him as their saviour, he would return to earth then and there and set up his kingdom. And again, many people put their faith in the Lord Jesus and the number of men who believed was about 5,000. However, the leaders of the people, the rulers, the elders and the teachers did not believe that Jesus was the Christ. They did not believe that Jesus could raise people from the dead and they wanted to stop Peter and John from speaking to the people and so they commanded them to stop teaching in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied that they couldn't help talking about all that they had seen and heard. The leaders and elders could not decide how to punish them especially as so many people were praising God for the wonderful miracle they had done. And so the leaders let Peter in go after making more threats. The apostles continued to do many such miracles. They were all signs to the Jews that they should repent and believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. If the whole nation, including the leaders, had accepted Jesus as their Messiah, he would, he would return to them just as he had promised. But the chief priests and the elders were hard-hearted and most of them refused to believe in Jesus despite all the many signs they saw and the apostles performing these every day. One time they arrested the apostles 
but they were miraculously set free from prison by an angel of the Lord. God was not going to let men stop his message being proclaimed. When they were questioned by the high priest again, Peter and the others replied, We must obey God rather than men. They spoke again of Jesus rising from the dead, but instead of believing, the Jewish rulers refused to listen and wanted them dead. One of the Pharisees, however, whose name was Gamaliel, persuaded them to let the apostles go. He told his fellow rulers that if what Peter and the others were saying was from God, then they would never be able to stop them. Men cannot fight against God, he told them, and he was right. Men cannot fight against God. Soon there were more and more believers. Even many of the priests believed in Jesus. However, as their numbers grew, so did the determination of those against them. One day, a man called Stephen, who was full of faith and the Holy Spirit, was seized and dragged before the ruling council, the Sanhedrin. He spoke of his faith and ended by saying that he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. At this, the whole group of people rushed at him, dragged him outside, and they stoned him to death. He was the first believer to die for his faith in the Lord Jesus. Standing close by, while Stephen died, was a young man called Saul who watched all that was going on. He approved of all that had happened. He thought all who believed in Jesus should be thrown into prison and therefore many of the believers were afraid and left Jerusalem for safer places to live. However, in spite of the danger, the apostles stayed behind and carried on spreading the news about the Lord Jesus. Later, not content with dragging both men and women from Jerusalem off to prison, Saul asked the high priest to let him go to Damascus and capture believers there as well. He wanted to bring them back to Jerusalem to stand trial, and the high priest agreed, and Saul set off. When he was nearly there, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? And the voice replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. When Saul got up, he found that he could see nothing around him. He had been struck blind. The men who were travelling with him guided him to Damascus, where for three days Paul remained blind. He couldn't eat or drink anything. And then Ananias, a faithful disciple of the Lord, was sent to Saul by God. He placed his hands on Saul and immediately he could see again and Saul was filled with the Holy Spirit. From that day on, Saul was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He felt so ashamed for persecuting the believers and thought himself to be the worst of all sinners. He began to preach Christ in the synagogues in Damascus, amazing all the Jews who heard him. They knew he had once persecuted them, but now, instead, there he was preaching to them and teaching them that Jesus was the Christ. After some time, just as Saul had persecuted the believers, others were eager to capture him and wanted to put him to death. He was no longer safe in Damascus, and so one night some of the believers helped him escape from the city by lowering him over the city walls in a basket. From there he went to Jerusalem and met Peter and other apostles. However, after just a few days his life was in danger there too, and so he was sent off to Tarsus, the city where he had been born.